Welcome, friends. My name is Charity, and I serve as the pastor of Spiritual Formation and Groups. Once a month, I'll be popping in to share a lesson with you all, and today we are talking about leadership. Perhaps you've heard it said that everything rises and falls on leadership. I think it's true. Uh, that's true in every part of our lives, from our church life to our home life to our work life, parenting life. Um, it all falls on leadership. So right now I am in the throes of summer. Uh, I am trying my best to have a good attitude about it. Uh, not always easy because, right, routines uh, change during the summer. And uh, my boys are eating me out of house and home. I have to buy more things. The routine is out of whack. Uh, everybody's bored and wants more and more screen time. And so this is what summer mode is like in my house. But this summer I have decided that I am going to lead in this summer. So here's what that looks like for us. Um, all of us are writing up uh, three to five things that we really want to do this summer. We're making our little summer bucket list. And so this is going to be, for me, it's going to be, <laughs> this is what I'm going to bribe them with, right? This is the reward when we get these other things done, right? So we'll have some fun things that we can uh, continue to look forward to. Uh, we also have some fun menus that we want to try this summer. And my 11-year-old uh, is really into cooking right now. And so he has some things he wants to try. We are going to be keeping some of our fall routines um, so that we don't get out of whack. Now, I don't know about uh, other parents, but, you know, it's sort of like I could let them stay up all night, all week, you know, and then that one week right before school, we try to get it all back together, and they never do. They never regroup well. So we're going to still keep a regular bedtime and just see if we can if we can flow. So I'm trying to lead through this summer as a mama of two boys. Uh, and so I'm excited about that. Some of that is also some self-leadership, uh, meaning that there's some things I have to do so that they will be able to live into it. So how does all this matter? Uh, because leadership is really important. As a church, which is you, uh, not the building, who we are and who we become in part is due to your leadership. I know you looking around like, who's she talking about? <laughs> yes, I'm talking about you. We can all lead from the place where we're positioned, even if that's currently sitting in a seat on Sunday mornings. If you do only two things at the gathering, we invite you to worship regularly and join a group. Now, I know it is not easy. It's easier said than done to just go to the app and find the perfect group for yourself. Some people refuse to even use the app, and they just call me and say, hey, Charity, help me out. I need some help to figure out where to go and what to do. I get it, and I'm here for that. I'm here to help you. I'm willing to hold your hand. Um, here's the deal. While we have some really amazing groups, some folks are looking for something really specific. And maybe that's you, right? Maybe you're looking for a mom's group or you're looking for a specific family group, uh, a family group where it's uh, parents who have elementary age kids or parents of tweens. Uh, maybe you're looking for LGBT group or even more specifically within that group, you're looking for uh, other bi folks or lesbian folks, right? It can get really specific. Of course, I'd love to have every flavor of group imaginable for everyone here. But what is needed for any core group to exist is leadership. And that's what we're talking about today. One of my favorite scriptures uh, is from Luke 10. Actually, Luke is one of my favorite books of the Bible. And um, yeah, let's listen to a couple of verses from Luke 10. After these things, the Lord commissioned 72 others and sent them on ahead in pairs to every city and place as he was about to go. He said to them, the harvest is bigger than you can imagine, but there are few workers. Therefore, plead with the Lord of the harvest to send out workers for his harvest. So what I love about this scripture is that Jesus trusts us to lead. He commissioned 70 and says, go ahead of me. I'm coming to the places where you go, but go and get the people ready. He sends these 72 out into cities where the places that he's planning to visit. So Jesus trusts us. I think that is phenomenal. And I think sometimes we don't trust ourselves enough. Uh, and maybe even Jesus is saying, hey, just take a step. I got you. Uh, we can do this together. Speaking of together, uh, the other thing that happens in this passage of scripture uh, in another, uh, another uh, chapter, another uh, book, I should say, uh, it talks about the people being sent out two by two or in pairs. And I love this as well because I really believe that the best leadership is shared leadership. And so to be able to do something together with other people is uh, the most is, is really important and it's powerful. Um, this is important because we don't lead alone and 
uh, partnership is, I believe, important. So here's the deal. Uh, I want you to sit tight because later on in our conversation today, uh, which is which will be a brief convo, I have some pretty what we call B hags around here, <laughs> big hairy audacious goals. So these are some of my core group goals, things I'm really uh, pushing for and really excited for, things that I believe God has um, has asked of us and of me to like. Let's see if we can um, move forward and get to these goals. But here's the deal. None of these goals are just mine alone. They're ours. It's something we get to do together. And so I really hope that um, you will join me in partnership as we seek to, um, to execute these goals together. So the other part of the scripture is about the harvest, right? Harvest in this passage could be speaking about people who, who might, under the right circumstances, come to follow Jesus. I also think that the harvest can mean the climate. You know, think about something just being the right time, right, the right season, that thing you can't always maybe put your finger on, but you know that uh, this, there's something palatable, like this is, this is the time we should do this. We should lean into it, uh, a time when people and or you are even more willing to say yes. And then third, harvest can be spoken of as possibilities. It's one of my favorite words, I think, uh, in the world is possibilities. <laughs> uh, I love potential. I love possibilities. Like, what could it be? Um, and so something new uh, is, is uh, brewing. And so I think this is another thing we can think about when we read this scripture about harvest. So the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. The leaders are few, the, pe- the persons who will build the relationships with, with the harvest, if you will. The persons who ask questions, the persons who will open their homes for hospitality and learning. We have more possibilities than we have people ready to maximize them and turn them into reality. So without workers, we, we leave fruit on the vine. And if fruit is left on the vine, it can die and be no good. You might think of it as leaving money on the table and don't nobody want to do that. So... We're leaving possibilities potentially to die. What's good, though, and what I'm grateful for is that uh, a lot of times God will give us second chances and fifth chances, and those possibilities, those opportunities do come back around. And so for that, we say, thank you, God. So leaders are those who influence. They move in the world, sharing information and inviting people to join them in an effort. Leaders bring people together. Leaders notice and maximize the possibilities. And so I hope that I'm speaking to the leader in you today as you hear this. When I think of the future of our core group ministry, it rises and falls on my leadership. And this means I must be a leader that shares leadership with each of you. So I talked about these BHAGs, these big, hairy, audacious goals. I want to share them with you today. There are three goals we have for core group this year, and the first uh, one is 100, uh, 100 total um, groups. And so right now we have about 82 because you, we start off with groups, and then maybe they won't continue on into the fall. So I think we're at about 82 or so groups. So that means we need 18 new groups to get to uh, 100. If we need 18 new groups, at a minimum, we need 18 new leaders. And so that is my goal, at a minimum, 18 new leaders um, going into the fall. Then the 200 goal, so 100 new groups and 200 new people signing up for groups. So 200 new people participating in core groups this season. I'm super excited um, about that. I cannot wait to hear the stories because what ends up happening, friends, is People find that core group is the thing that they needed, that they didn't know they needed, or it's the thing that they have sort of refused, and then they're like, dang, I should have did that a long time ago. (laughs) And so 200 new people in core groups. And then 300 is uh, the number of people that I'm just hoping will continue to share about groups, share their experiences about groups, and invite other people to consider them. So here's something that I also say to folks as I come to a close. Uh, If you don't see it, it might mean you need to create it or lead it. Mm -mm, I know, don't don't be mad at me, don't be mad. But listen, here's the deal. There are things we want, and sometimes we're sitting back waiting on someone else to make it happen, and really uh, that's the nudge of God in us saying, do it, do it. You're right, you're not the only one. And so I know that's annoying, but here's the thing. I got you. Uh, I don't want you to... to, um, to start a new group or do any of this alone. So here are a couple of things I want to invite you to if God is nudging you uh, of something that, that you really want, but you haven't been able to find and that you might be called to create it. One, find a friend. Doing doing this with someone is always easier. Uh, it just, 
you take a deep breath before you know it, right? It's like, whoo, okay, we got each other's back. It's going to be okay. So find a friend to lead with you. I think these make the best core groups. Um, every new leader gets a coach. And so you are not just out here, you know, sinking or swim. Uh, you have a person who will check in with you as much as you need, but at a minimal, uh, they will talk with you every month, see how you are doing as a person, how's your group going, uh, what are some strategies, if things, um, if, or if things you might want to try to continue to, to grow as a group, uh, how's your conversation in group, all the things, they're there to support you. And these are folks who have led groups, and uh, they just really want you to be successful. And uh, third, we have uh, four gatherings every year, excuse me, for our group leaders. And those gatherings are meant to equip and to train you uh, and also just speak life into you and give you some time of retreat. And so you are uh, you will definitely be trained over over the course of the year to get what you need in addition to having your coach. And then fourth, I just want to invite you um, to something that's with a low commitment, if if anything I've said today resonates and you're thinking maybe I would do this, I'll give it a try perhaps, um, come to the Start a New Core Group Lunch and Learn. This is an opportunity to share your idea for a group, get feedback from me and others. You can hear from other uh, leaders, particularly those who's led a, who just started a group last year. They'll tell you what their first year was like and uh, give you the lowdown, right? Um, and... You'll get the feedback, you get to ask questions, and yeah, you also get to meet other people who are um, in the same boat as you who are considering what it would mean to do this. So the Start a New Group Lunch and Learn, this happens on Sunday, July 14th at noon uh, at the McCausland site. Uh, we'll have a link for you to sign up, and um, yeah, lunch on me, let's have some conversation. So here's the deal, friends. Um, I, I love being able to talk about, this leadership is actually one of my favorite things to talk about, uh, uh, probably besides emotional intelligence, leadership, but they all go together. Um, but I really want to just leave you with a couple things to think about as you um, have listened today. So here are a couple questions um, for you in your life. What area of your life do you desire to lead in more? What area of your life do you desire to lead in more? This could be your own personal discipline. This could be something in your faith life. Maybe it's like me and you're saying, I want to lead through the summer instead of just letting it happen to me, whatever it is. Maybe it's uh, something at work. Uh, maybe it's something in the way that you volunteer. And the second question is, what harvest do you see? What harvest do you see? When you look around in uh, varying areas of your life, is there a place that seems like the fruit is ready to be picked? Right? Is there a place that is is calling out to you to to say yes to it or uh, to go and to be a part of it? What are the possibilities you see? And so then I would just invite you to to offer those two things up in reflection and uh, and to pray to God. I pray that you have the courage uh, to step out um, beyond where you are and uh, like those seventy, go out into the places knowing that God uh, through Jesus is with you. Uh, I invite you to stay open because God trusts you. And uh, I trust you as well. And I'm looking forward to seeing how God will use you and us as we uh, move into the future of groups together this fall. God bless you.